I am coming to you from the future. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Although I'm coming to you technically from the past when you watch this, I did a deep dive into what technologies are trending, what are the most popular technologies to learn, not only for 2023, but looking ahead. We are diving into some technologies that I haven't actually heard on a lot of lists when I did this research, when I said, what are the top technologies that are not only for now in 2023, but looking ahead are continuing to be in demand of the future. What technologies should you learn if you are someone who wants to either grow in tech or maybe you're already working in tech and wanting to specialize in an area that you know will be in demand for job security, high pay, whatever the case may be. I felt like this list wouldn't be complete or, or wouldn't be accurate if the first one wasn't this. What is it you ask? Natural language processing. This should be no surprise to any of you watching this video as you turn on your TV, go on your phone. Everywhere we go right now, we see how widely used AI is being adapted. We see every company under the sun who wants to start integrating AI. And this feels different. This feels permanent, meaning we saw this kind of rush of technology being used or this boom when Web3 first came around, which is still very in demand and still very popular. But with AI, we see companies adopting to it at a much quicker, much wider rate. Is it bad that I'm wearing green? Or is it gonna confuse me for that? Natural language processing is a form of AI technology that allows machines to understand the input from users so they can understand our human text, if you will, and know what to do with it. And with natural language processing, there are a ton of courses online, which is the good news. I'll list some of them here, and I'll also make sure to link them down below. It seems though, as you can see based on these courses, of course, a common trend throughout many of these courses is the use of Python. So if you are already someone who uses Python or is kind of tinkering around, it's pretty much a great way to take a next step. I'm not saying it's going to be an easy next step necessarily, but it's a great thing to consider getting into. Unlike virtual reality, which completely changes the user's perception, it's all virtual, augmented reality is super interesting in the sense that it combines both your actual environment with virtual reality. So you are interacting with objects that are actually in the room, but then also too with virtual objects laid on top of that. Many companies are now using AR to provide customers or users with a really unique experience. And I'm sure one of the most popular games that utilized AR quite a few years ago, kind of ahead of its time really, is Pokemon Go. Pokemon? Pokemon? Am I saying that right? Which is it, Pokemon or Pokemon? It's the combination of having an overlay of this virtual reality while you are interacting with a physical world. And as you start thinking about what is possible with this, when you even think of that game, Pokemon Go, the possibilities really open up to such a cool and unique user experience by having them interact with the physical world, but also additional elements. I know recently I was at an event in New York City and they used a lot of AR for their shopping experiences. There were mirrors, I, part of it was mirrors that you could see what you were wearing, but you weren't actually wearing it. So. Let me, let me back up a sec. You could see yourself in the mirror and then it would overlay different options uh, of outfits that you could choose. And that's incredible. I mean, if I don't have to go into another changing room to shop or try in a bunch of clothes, the future is here. So you can think of how that's used in so many different applications. This is another area of tech that is continuing to boom and is not going anywhere anytime soon. And next on the list is big data analytics. You knew there had to be a data one in here. Data is the new oil or old oil at this point. I feel like that saying has been said so many times. Big data analytics refers to using powerful computer algorithms to analyze large sets of information that will uncover hidden patterns and trends, relationships, etc. This really helps businesses gain a deep insight into data they wouldn't have access to really understanding otherwise. They can't spend hours and hours going through spreadsheets or files trying to understand this data. Some examples of data analytics include data mining algorithms for fraud detection, recommendation systems based on customer behavior analysis, and predictive maintenance solutions based on machine learning models. Next on the list is IoT or Internet of Things. IoT essentially describes a network of physical objects that are embedded with sensors to connect to the internet. So it allows them to communicate, exchange, 
give data, collect data, feedback, monitor essentially, communicate to the internet and also to its users. So you can think of IoT as your coffee machine if you set in the morning or a great example of an IoT is your thermostat if you have what are those? Those Nest thermostats that you they will turn, they're censored. So based on their environment, they will go up in temperature or down in temperature. And we are really just on the brink of what IoT is capable of. We already use IoT in so many of our home devices and it's continuing to grow that way at a very quick rate. Some experts predict one day we'll be walking down the street and all we will see are different uh, IoT things that we can interact with or tools we can use. It's gonna be pretty exciting. This is an area of technology that is continuing to go grow very quickly. Next on the list is blockchain. Blockchain is a technology that although has been around for a while now, it's relatively speaking, it's something that over the last few years, of course, has become extraordinarily popular thanks to cryptocurrency or not thanks to however you want to look at it. And it is so widely used and continuing to be adopted. Blockchain technology is continuing to grow and be adopted by so many companies. I know our first thing that we often think of is cryptocurrency, but it's being used in healthcare, in uh, different identity theft, in ways where you can verify this person is actually it. Think of it as your unique fingerprint and how that could help so many companies ensure that they're actually interacting or verifying this specific person. Next on the list is cloud computing. It wouldn't be a list if I didn't include cloud. Not only that, but it's because it is continuing to be a top in-demand technology, not only for 2023, but I'm not a better, but if I was to bet, for the future. Cloud computing, if you want to put it in simple terms, is the delivery of computing services. So including servers, storage, databases, networking, software analytics, and intelligence. Let me just put up a diagram here on screen. Cloud computing is something we talk about quite often on this channel, and it's because it's continuing to really grow in demand. The reality is, as more companies adopt and go on the cloud, the more they're going to need to use it. The bigger they're going to need their storage capacity, the more maintenance they're going to need. This is a technology I personally am really, really excited to see how it evolves in the next five or 10 years, as pretty much all companies, to a certain degree, are utilizing the cloud. So what are some examples with cloud computing? Well, one, something that we probably all use every single day or most days is Google Docs or Microsoft 365. So users can access the Google Docs or Microsoft documents through the internet. And you can be more productive, work collaboratively because of cloud computing services that you are able to access your saved documents, documents you've worked on with other team members, it's all there. Another example is email, calendar, Skype, WhatsApp. Essentially all of these platforms take advantage of the cloud's ability to provide users with access to their data remotely. So you can access your personal data and information wherever you want or wherever you are located. Imagine a world, just as a side note, imagine a world where we were only able to access these things because location dependent Imagine all these digital nomads or travelers not being able to work while you're traveling. I can't, I can hardly imagine that world. And next up on the list is machine learning. One way I like to really understand or put simply what machine learning is, think of it as a way from how you can learn from your experiences or get better at certain tasks over time. This essentially is the purpose of machine learning or one of them. Machine learning can learn from their experiences and also improve their performance. But of course, instead of using human judgment or human experiences, it uses statistical techniques to identify patterns in data and make predictions or decisions based on those patterns. For example, let's use a machine learning algorithm that is trained to recognize images of cats. By analyzing thousands and thousands of pictures of cats, over time, it will learn to identify common features of a cat image, so say his pointy ears or whiskers. Once the algorithm has learned what a cat looks like, it can be used automatically to recognize new cats in pictures. And one common machine learning algorithm that I'm sure we are all to some degree familiar with is neural networks. Neural networks simulate the way the human brain works with a huge number of linked processing nodes. They are good at recognizing patterns and oftentimes play a very important role in applications using natural language processing. So think of it as image recognition or speech recognition. Next up is quantum computing. And I'm not gonna lie, what did I do before I started doing this video? I went on ChatGPT and typed in this exact thing. I'll screenshot it actually. Explain to me quantum computing like I am a child. 
because this is where, where it needed to start. Everyone needs to start somewhere. And I really like the example it gave, so let me share it with you. Imagine you have a big toy box filled with lots of different toys. Whenever you want to play with a specific toy, you have to look through the whole toy box to find it. This can take a lot of time, especially if you have a lot of toys. Now, imagine you have this magical power that lets you look through the entire toy box all at once and pick out the toy you want to play with. This sounds much better, right? I agree. Okay, so far so good. Well, in a way, that's what quantum computing is like. Instead of having to look through all the possible answers one by one, like a regular computer does, a quantum computer can look at all the possible answers right at once and pick out the right one. Mind blowing. This makes certain types of calculations much faster and of course more efficient than a regular computer can do. And it straight states at the end, which I hope we all can take away, quantum computing is much more complicated than finding toys, but this is a great example for someone who's just entering or learning about quantum computing. For this one, I needed my computer. Quantum computing to me is something that's so fascinating and we're really just on the brink of, but I can't, I'm, I'm still trying to grasp it fully other than, you know, some definition. So here's what I've heard. Quantum computing is an area of computer science focused on the development of technologies based on the principles of quantum theory. So essentially when I type in what is com quantum computing for dummies, it's a field of study centered on developing computer technology based on the principles of quantum theory. It's fascinating and I think we're just at the brink of what's possible with this. And next up is robotics. Robotics is a field in technology that involves the design, construction, and operation and use of robots. And well, one of the main functions of a robot is to be able to carry out tasks autonomously. So meaning it doesn't need the human intervention as it's walking or as it's doing its task. And there are many different types of robots. They don't all look like these cute little robots we see in images. Some examples of robots that are used in everyday life, I mean by everyday life throughout the world I should say, is let's say the Roomba, a popular vacuum cleaner that's made by iRobot. Uh, it uses sensors to navigate the room. It doesn't need human intervention typically. And also too, it avoids obstacles while also cleaning your room. Another example that I'm sure we're all familiar with is Boston Dynamics Robot. This is a dog, well it looks like a dog, and I want to take it home. It's not even real. That's how this technology plays tricks on your mind. I see the Boston Dynamics dog and I'm like, I need to adopt this dog, but it's not even a dog. And it can perform tasks such as carrying objects or inspecting hazardous environments. Robotics is an area I wish I got into when I was younger, and I say that because it's continuing to become more and more popular, especially as AI continues to grow in demand. Combining that with robotics is just a really in interesting combination. And it's one of those things for anyone who is hands-on and likes to build things and feel what they're actually building, this is an interesting area. The possibilities for robots are pretty much endless when you start thinking of what they are capable of. In certain situations, could you put a robot there instead of an actual human? Think of uh, firefighters or people who are in dangerous situations. Could we instead replace those people, the dangerous part of their jobs, I'm not saying their jobs as a whole, but the dangerous part of their jobs with a robot or have a robot assist them? Pretty interesting. All right, there is my list. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm curious to hear your take on this. Are there some you agree with, disagree with? Are there some that I missed? Leave in the comments. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like, leave a comment. I do my absolute best to answer every single one of your comments. Although I'm not perfect because I'm not a robot, I do my absolute best. I love you all and I'll see you soon. Thank you.